Dr. Fox, and let's talk about the major glands of the neck. In this video, we'll discuss the thyroid and parathyroid glands, their locations, functions, and vascular supply. The thyroid gland is the most prominent and largest gland of the neck. It is an endocrine gland, meaning that it is ductless. It secretes its products or hormones directly into the bloodstream. The thyroid gland is variably located um, along the C-spine, but generally can be found between C5 and T1. Here we can see the thyroid gland sitting just inferior to the larynx. But it can be found as high as the oblique line of the larynx. The hormones that the thyroid gland produces is thyroid hormone, both T3 and T4. These are substances that increase cellular metabolism and growth. And also calcitonin, which decreases concentration of blood calcium. Thyroid glands are supported by a number of different vessels. Um, for starters, there is a branch of the external carotid artery, the superior thyroid artery. This is the first branch of the external carotid, which descends the neck to serve the thyroid. There's also the inferior thyroid artery, which is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk, which comes off of the first part of the subclavian artery. The inferior thyroid artery ascends the neck in the tracheoesophageal groove, a slight depression between the trachea and esophagus, to serve the thyroid gland from the inferior. The inferior thyroid artery is also the major source of blood to the parathyroid gland as well. And it's going to have a very close relationship with the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which also ascends the tracheoesophageal groove on its way to serve the larynx. In addition, there is a variable artery. This is present in about 10% of the population, known as the thyroid ima artery, which also serves the thyroid from the inferior. The presence of the thyroid ima artery is a risk for tracheostomy. So in the event that um, an emergent airway needs to be created, uh, there are typically two major options. One is the cricothyrotomy, which would go through this median cricothyroid ligament. That's the safest of the two because there are no vessels that should um, be jeopardized by an incision there. Whereas a tracheostomy, which should only be performed under surgical conditions, cuts into the trachea. And you can see that if one were to incise a thyroid ima artery, that would be a significant risk for bleeding. We often discuss classic anatomical relationships among various features of the body and one of which is the relationship between the inferior thyroid artery and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. During a procedure known as a thyroidectomy, or the removal of a thyroid gland, uh, the arteries servicing the thyroid are oftentimes ligated distal to any other branches which may serve different features. So in this case, we can see that the ligation is on the inferior thyroid artery, just distal to the inferior laryngeal artery. Well, you can see that the inferior laryngeal artery and the inferior thyroid artery share a very close relationship with this recurrent laryngeal nerve. So one must be very careful when ligating the inferior thyroid artery so as to not damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now there are three sets of veins which are going to drain the thyroid gland, keeping in mind that veins are in constant. So the first set of veins 
are the superior thyroid veins. These superior thyroid veins are typically going to drain into the IJV, and they're going to have a very close relationship with that superior thyroid artery. The next set of veins are the middle thyroid veins. These also typically drain into the IJV, and they can have a relationship with the inferior thyroid artery on its way up to uh, serve both the thyroid gland and the larynx. And then finally, we have the inferior thyroid veins. The inferior thyroid veins typically are draped over the anterior aspect of the gland, in particular in the uh, vicinity of the isthmus of the gland, which is this central part um, that is between the two lobes of the gland. And these veins typically are going to drain down into the brachiocephalic veins, in particular the left brachiocephalic vein. Turning our attention to the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, we can sometimes see the parathyroid glands. Parathyroid glands are also endocrine glands, ductless glands which secrete hormones directly into the bloodstream. These are oftentimes invariably associated with the posterior aspect of the lobes of the thyroid gland. We say that there are typically four of them. Uh, there may be as few as one. There may be um, six or more. Um, they produce a hormone known as parathyroid hormone, or PTH. Parathyroid hormone increases concentrations of blood calcium. The predominant blood supply to the parathyroid glands is the inferior thyroid artery. As we know, sometimes structures may deviate from what we consider to be typical. In the case of the thyroid gland, an enlarged thyroid gland um, can have a very wide differential diagnosis. If it's something that uh, we can see with the naked eye, we oftentimes will refer to it as goiter. And this may be indicative of something as benign as an iodine deficiency. This is um, the reason why um, table salt is iodinated. It may also indicate uh, chronic autoimmune thyroiditis, also known as Hashimoto's disease, or Graves' disease, or cancer. But keep in mind that the size of the thyroid gland may function with various hormonal cycles. One of the potential issues of an enlarged thyroid is the potential for compression of deeper structures. The thyroid gland is going to be in the vicinity of many different elements of neurovasculature, and that compression can jeopardize blood flow or put additional pressure on nerves that are passing through. So that leads us to our assessment question. And that is, the thyroid ima artery, if it is present, is likely to have a close relationship with which veins? A, the inferior thyroid vein, B, the middle thyroid vein, or C, the superior thyroid vein? Well, let's think about um, where the thyroid ima artery originates from and where it goes. So typically, it's coming from the brachiocephalic artery, ascending the neck anterior to the trachea, serving the thyroid gland from inferior. You think of the distribution of thyroid veins. The superior and middle thyroid veins are uh, draining laterally to the IJV, so these are probably not good answers. Whereas the inferior thyroid vein is draining inferiorly from the thyroid gland anterior to the trachea. So the inferior thyroid vein will be present in the same area as the thyroid ima artery in those 10% of individuals 
that possess it. So A, inferior thyroid vein is the correct answer. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll talk to you in the next video.